Hello and welcome to Paris. For one day only, Business Daily is in what is arguably the fashion capital of the world as part of our fashion and business series. I'm Hannah Mullane and today I'll be walking the streets of this beautiful city, heading to some of its fashion hotspots and taking a look at how important the fashion industry really is. There is always some kind of inspiration up there in the city, so it could be museums, art galleries, uh, you can see people in the streets wearing like different things. Here, the fashion industry is worth more than $160 billion. It makes up almost 3% of the country's GDP and brings in more than a million jobs. I have a lot of people coming from Milano, I mean Italy or... New York actually now and London, so yeah, I think Paris is definitely the place to be for fashion. Today we'll find out why Paris is so important to the world of fashion, how the capital supports fashion businesses and why millions of tourists flock to the city every year for the classic Parisian shopping experience. That's all coming up on today's episode of Business Daily. My first stop is the Marais. It's an area just north of the River Seine that runs through the centre of Paris and it's full of thin streets lined with shops from independent boutiques to well-known French brands. And you don't have to walk far before you find some of those vintage high-end pieces. It certainly gives tourists the Parisian experience they'd hoped for. But it's more than that for Linda Ciccarelli. For her, it's a workplace. She's a personal shopper and has been taking tourists from all around the world on shopping trips to the Marais for the last 10 years. Today, she's taking me for a tour. It's one of those places where also Parisians come and hang out, like it's very Parisian. So it's a charming little neighborhood and what I love about the Marais, it's very diverse. So you find everything from tight budget to drifting and second hand to luxury clothing lines. When I mean luxury, it's not those big brands like um, Louis Vuitton or for those things, it's more secondhand. But you can find really nice, high quality clothes and it's not always the same brands that you can find everywhere. And also it's fun because it's like a gay Jewish area. So you find all kinds of different shops. And now we are at uh, Brani. It's a very nice boutique in the Marais, which I usually come with uh, mother and daughters. And I always know that I have something prepared. We prepare something for you today. Oh, exciting. And we have a few pieces. I think this would be looking great on you, the jumpsuit. That is lovely. The jumpsuit is everything. It's a saver for when you have one of those floating days for where you don't want to think about how should I put my outfit for traveling, but you still want to look stylish and nice. You can dress it up with like high heels, sandals, sneakers. You will always look great. I think this is a must for you. And that's what I thought when I was thinking of you, the jumpsuit. And then we have all kinds of different, you know, more, you know, for weekends, hanging out, lounging. That's what the French do it so well. They are casual, but they still look like uh, they spend hours putting the outfit together, but it comes naturally. And of course, you cannot miss the stripes. So the French, they could die with their stripes. Okay, let's stop there before I spend every penny I have. Instead, I asked Linda about the types of clients she has and what they want from a personalized shopping trip. I have a lot of mother and daughters that come to Paris, especially from the US and Australia. And when they come here, they really want to have like an effective time during two hours. They want to absorb the Parisian fashion, but at the same time, they want to like have like, you know, little advices. They want to get out of the box and get a, like a, a cute Parisian outfit. That's what I come in. I also do a lot of surprises for husband. Like uh, there are a lot of men, they are romantic. It's nice to find out that. And I have to organize a more VIP experience for their wife. There's a, usually a driver involved, a longer experience, three, four hours, or maybe half of the day. Tell me about the kind of budgets your clients come to you with and sort of how you manage that. It could go very low, have people telling me I have 200 euros or they say dollars, Mm -hmm. uh, 500 or I have 
8,000, 30,000 euros. So it goes very fast uh, and it can go mother and daughters that uh, have to pick them up at the Ritz or mother and daughters with like a, a little budget that they save during the year. So I would ask them some question about their lifestyle, where they live, and I would try to really get like an idea of their lifestyle through a photo. Like a photo is very important for me because right away I will get, you know, their body shape and their style. I'm not a psychic, but I can tell by looking at a photo like the person kind of like fashion soul. Whilst Linda's helping people find their fashion soul, I'm looking for some fashion businesses. So I'm jumping on the metro and heading north of the city to the International Fashion Academy. Peter Jenho Sang is the CEO of Beyond Form. He left the UK for Paris to set up his company that works with and supports new fashion businesses starting out in the city. One of his jobs is to run a fashion incubator. I asked him what this does for startups here. Things like masterclasses, mentoring, introduction to our network, so that could be potential investors, that could be to potential clients, or anybody that the startup may feel that they feel could have a meaningful and um, engaging conversation with to get that idea off the ground. Naturally, by being in a fashion school as well, of course, we have the support network of the school to be able to plug them in into a, a module within an academic course, for example, or it could be putting them in a specific project to get them a little bit more visible in the industry. So talk to me about some of the businesses that have come through the programme. In this specific school, there's around 50 nationalities. In terms of some of the ideas, it ranges anything from starting a tech-led company, like could be a solution dealing with surplus stock, right through to fashion brands. So they want to create a collection and they want to get it into a retailer. So we help them with the whole breadth of the fashion industry. And how important are incubators in bringing new talent to Paris, keeping the reputation of Paris as a place for fashion yeah. going? We are fashion tech specific and I come from the UK and when I first arrived in Paris I was really surprised actually there wasn't much happening here and for me it's really important to nurture some of these new and more innovative subjects that potentially are not necessarily taught yet in fashion schools so where do these founders go to? They want to do a tech platform or they want to do a service for example that isn't necessarily your mainstream fashion. Having an incubator that allows them to explore those spaces is super, super vital. In terms of more, the more traditional elements, for example, like creating a fashion brand, when it comes to the creative, they're not necessarily as hot, shall we say, in creating a business. And that's where we will then come in and help them to think about, OK, your designs are great, but how do we put that into a retail store? How do we get a buyer in front of you to look at your collection and be like, OK, I want to buy X, Y, Z to put it into my, into my store? Besides the hard skills that we can teach them, it's also about getting them to think about those relational aspects as well within a incubator. Paris is so well known for lots of big brands that have been around for a really, really long time. They perhaps haven't had to rely on tech and new savvy things as much because they have the reputation that they do. Do you think that meant that Paris was a little bit behind in some of those kind of new advancements? Well, compared to London, I would definitely say yes. Obviously, there are the biggest groups here, so LVMH, Kieran Group, who own brands like Gucci, Louis Vuitton. They are catching up, so they do obviously have their own business units that look into innovation and technology, but compared to the UK, it wasn't necessarily up to speed. Are there things that Paris does to kind of help businesses grow and support new business? Uh, Paris has a lot of things here that will help them to do business eventually in the future, whether that is getting their first client in Paris or their first partnership, for example, or it's about meeting XYZ person because it is an international city. A lot of the mentors that we work with don't actually come from Paris as well, but they've also come to Paris for that same experience. And then also to pass that knowledge on. Myself being an expat coming from the UK, you know, I chose to stay in Paris because of those same reasons that I can eventually create you know, the next evolution of an incubator slash my business within the city. 
for Paris and France in general with the President Macron's um, startup agenda. Over the last term that he has come into office, he's actually launched things like Station F, that is the public bank here called BPI as well, which does a lot of funding of startup ideas and also there is the French tech visa. So what does that mean specifically? If you are a foreigner, you want to come here to create a tech-led startup, you can actually get a talent passport to stay for four years, which is amazing, to be honest. Um, as long as you are affiliated with an incubator like Foundry, that you can actually get the, the French tech visa. So there's a lot of mechanics there helping the startup ecosystem. One fashion brand making the most of the startup culture in Paris and Peter's incubator programme is Finds. It's a tech platform that helps fashion brands deal with excess stock. Andrea Hergert is the co-founder. So just to give you a little bit of context, like every third garment that is produced today is not sold at full price or not sold at all. So obviously that generates an enormous economic but also ecologic problem for the brands. Overall, like 45 billion clothes yearly are not sold. So that generates season over season, you know, different kind of quantities, sizes, compositions to manage for brands to find like acquirers, like the receiving party. And the whole process is managed manually today. So basically what Finds is doing is taking out the complexity of unsold inventory management for brands and matching them automatically to the right reseller, recycler, or NGO. So we centralize all the aspects of unsold inventory management into one dedicated platform so that the brands can optimize monetization. Tell me how you go about starting a business like that. You notice a problem, you want to fix it. How do you go about doing that? So we started in 2020, pivoted multiple times. The first idea was to alter and um, repair clothes. And then the pandemic happened and we couldn't really have this service because we needed like to measure the bodies, etc. So we switched more to B2B, proposing a service to brands, extending the life of their clothes. And then we started to see that brands have like a big issue with unsold inventories. We saw that this is like a common problem. And today there isn't really a tool that's helping them to manage that. Still, you need like a network a ecosystem, and that's where we joined a Foundry. We, we knew that we need like help. How did programs like the Foundry and then other programs that you've gone on to since help you? What kind of things could they offer? So the Foundry was a good start because it's fashion techs. We needed like industry specialists who can help us and give like insights on the fashion industry, but then also like business people, entrepreneurs who can give us help on any topic, you know, like legal stuff or like how to create a financial forecasting or how to do a marketing plan. Like you need so much skills. How significant was being in Paris to starting up the business? Last year, France has prohibited the destruction of unsold clothes um, as the first country in the world. And actually the EU is right now talking about to um, prohibit it for the EU and um, that will of course even give another push for the brands to act faster and to be more transparent about their stocks and everything. There are a lot of like luxury and fashion groups here so also now we are approaching a lot of French brands to use fines as a solution. It's a good start but we, we want to be global and we feel like uh, this solution needs to be global because the stocks are everywhere in the world. The allure of Paris is certainly attracting entrepreneurs like Andrea and Peter. The city itself remains the most visited in the world. According to the Paris Ile de France Regional Tourism Board, 44 million people visited the city last year, contributing more than $35 billion to the city's economy. Of course, not all of those visitors come for fashion. But it does mean there's plenty of opportunity. An opportunity that Simona Foti took advantage of. She moved from Italy to Paris to work in fashion and she now runs her own fashion agency business. A business that she says would have been much more difficult to set up had she not made the move to France. So my role like an agent is to find clients for my stylist. 
and uh, bring so clients and deal with all the contract, the agenda, the priority, and of course the strategy. So I work with the brand clients that um, they ask me to uh, give some ideas for collaboration or maybe they are looking for something specific like uh, sportswear, talents or um, men's or so and I bring some ideas, some names so this is what I'm doing. It's a job that lots of people want to do, they want to get into the fashion industry. How do you go about doing what you do? How do you get to that place? I start very young, like a PR and so I met the good people and I started my career like an agent when um, I would say 15 years ago and now I have my own company so it was an uh, interesting I would say processing but I think uh, yeah it's a nice job but you need to have this skill also like a commercial skill that is important to have and uh, of course a lot of passion. You're not from Paris originally, you, you are from Italy. What made you choose to come to Paris to work and start your business in Paris rather than Milan or London or somewhere? Because I think it's the city to be, to work in fashion. So I have a lot of people coming from Milano, I mean Italy or uh, New York actually now and London. So yeah, I think Paris is definitely the place to be for fashion. Why do you think Paris is the place to be over those other sort of fashion cities? What makes it stand out? I think it's uh, definitely the creativity that is here. But also, I would say there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of open-minded that is very interesting. Is it easy to start a business like yours in Paris? I would say yes, <laughs> because um, I would say French um, industry is very um, is helping young uh, to open companies, small company like mine. So I would say yes, definitely. Just go for it because uh, it's a very, very interesting and creative business. So uh, be really focused, have a vision, and uh, just um, if you like and you love what you're doing, I'm sure that you will succeed for sure. Simona Foti there, just one of many business owners working in the fashion industry here in Paris, ending this episode of Business Daily. Thanks for listening.